don't let some robot get you fired because you're too lazy to write a couple of lines of SQL like this poor bastard. I'm going to show you how to set this up properly using Superbase and Cursor, but these same principles can apply to any MCP server you want to set up. So let's get into it. So from our new MCP docs, provided you are authenticated with Superbase, you can now scope this down to a specific Superbase project. So here we can see the MCP URL is that mcp.superbase.com slash MCP. And then we can scope this down to a specific project, like in my case, MCP, and then select that project. We can see it's appended on a query param. So our AI tool that we're configuring this MCP server for, so like cursor or Claude code, now only has access to this specific project. And this is because we want MCP to be useful, but we want to give it as little access as it possibly needs to serve our use case. And here, we only need to give it access to this one project. We also recommend toggling on read-only mode, especially if you're giving it access to your hosted production instance of Superbase. And we can also scope this down to just the features that it needs access to. So in this case, we only want it to help us out with our database queries, so it doesn't need access to debugging features like logs or functions or branching or our files in Superbase storage. And you can see as we've been clicking around this interface, it's been building up this super convenient URL that we can copy across to that AI tool that we want to configure our MCP server for. To take it one step further, if you're using one of the supported clients here, like Cursor, VS Code, Windsurf, or Claude Code, we can just click this very convenient Add to Cursor button, which is going to open up Cursor for us pre-filling all of the fields we need to install our Superbase MCP server. And as we can see, this still needs us to authenticate before we can use that MCP server. And so this is a much more secure way to authenticate using OAuth rather than having that personal access token stored in plain text in that URL when we're configuring our MCP server. So let's open this one up in a browser where we can read through what we're giving cursor access to as well as scoping it down to a specific organization. So let's authorize cursor and open that one up in cursor and then show that our Superbase MCP server is correctly installed. So we can now use that MCP server to ask Superbase questions. So we could say, how many authors do I have in my database? So it's asking us whether it can use the list tables tool. So make sure you're always reviewing what cursor is trying to do before clicking run. And now it wants to run this query to count each of our authors. So let's click run. And we can see we have 20 authors in our database. And this is the shape of our authors table. Could also ask something slightly more complex, like show me the names of each of the authors with a list of blog posts they have published. And let's run that one. And we can see the query that cursor wants to run. So let's click to run. And now we're getting this scrolling list of each of our 20 authors and then the titles of each of their blog posts. And don't the titles of these blogs just look riveting. I wish I could read them, but we need to focus on the task at hand. So let's try and do a write operation. So let's try to create a new table for comments for each of these blogs. So we can say add a comments table where each comment belongs to a specific blog. But now when we try to run this, it's first checking, can I apply this migration? So let's say yes. But then we're getting this error because it cannot apply migrations in read-only mode. And this is great. We don't want to give cursor unrestricted access to our hosted production database. In fact, this is one of the things we have listed in our security risks and recommendations section. Well, firstly, it says don't connect to production because we don't want to expose real data. But here under read-only mode, if we must connect to the production database, make sure it's in read-only mode, which executes all queries as a read-only Postgres user. So if we do need to make changes to the shape of our data, it's probably safer to use something like branching or you can do something similar by cloning your hosted Superbase project down to your local machine. So let's do that. So back over in Cursor, we have a completely empty project. So let's start by initializing this as a Superbase project with MPX Superbase in it. And we can just say no to both of these questions. So this will create this Superbase folder. And then to run the entire Superbase stack, 
locally, we can run npx superbase start. And a quick caveat, you need to have Docker installed and running. I'm using something called orbstack for this. You can check it out if you're running macOS or just install Docker directly. And once we finish downloading the entire internet, we have each of the URLs for the different services that make up Superbase. So if we want to open up the dashboard or Superbase Studio, we can see this default project with no tables, no data. Actually, it does have tables from when I ran through this example, but we can clear those out by running npx Superbase db reset. So this will look through our Superbase project here and see if we have any changes or migrations that we want to apply. We'll look at those soon, but basically it will reset us back to our initialized state. So now we can see we have no tables and we have this big blue banner telling us that we're running on localhost. So what if we want to copy down the schema or state of our production database without any of our production data, which we don't want to duplicate all over the place. There might be PII or anything there. We don't want to mess with it, but we can pull down this schema by first logging in with MPX Superbase login, and we can press enter to open up a browser, which shows us a verification code, which we can copy and paste back in our terminal. And so I'm now logged into the Superbase CLI as my account. So I can do anything I can do in the Superbase dashboard, but from the CLI. So we can now run MPX Superbase link to link our local project to our hosted Superbase instance. So this will bring up an interactive list of all of our Superbase projects. I have way too many. So I can type slash to filter them down and then look for MCP. And apparently that still doesn't filter it down enough, but I can see that this second project is the one that I want. And so now that my local machine is connected to that Superbase hosted cloud instance, I can now pull down all those schema changes. And I can do that with MPX Superbase DB pull. And this is asking if we would like to update the remote migration history table. So let's say yes. And now this has created a migrations folder with our migration file that represents the state of our Superbase project. So we have a table for authors and then blogs. And again, we don't have any of the actual data from our production database, because that would be a no-no. So to actually run this migration file against our local Superbase project, we can type npx Superbase db reset. So again, this is going to reset the state of our database, but then it's going to look at this migrations folder and run each file sequentially to bring our local Superbase database in sync with our hosted cloud production database. And so now if we head back to the dashboard, we can close this verification code now. We can see our local host project now has our authors and our blogs tables, but none of our data. So let's fix that with MCP. So right now our MCP server, which we can find under cursor, shh, just pretend that didn't happen. So again, under her cursor and then settings and then cursor settings and then tools and MCP, we can see our Superbase MCP server is still pointing to our production instance of Superbase. And so we can get the URL for our local Superbase instance by running MPX Superbase start. And that will again print out each one of our URLs, one of which is our MCP URL. So let's copy this one and then we can paste this up here and we don't need to worry about our specific project or scoping it down to read only or only the database features because we're now just running in this isolated sandboxed local environment. So let's paste that one in here and give it a save. And now if we clear up the screen a little bit, get rid of all of these things and open up a new chat and say something like populate my database with example data. Insert 20 realistic authors with each author having five to 10 blogs they have written. Each blog should have a realistic title and description and be relevant for mid to senior level software engineers. All right, let's see how it does. Again, it's asking us if it can list tables. And now this is up to you. Now that we're running in this sandboxed environment, you could just go full vibe mode and let it run anything it would like, or you can review each one. It's probably still good practice to review each one and stop it from just like going off on some random tangent. 
And so it wants to run this insert query and a select, and now it's going to create those blog posts. And now it looks like it's going to do that for each author individually. Okay, and it looks like we now have some actual data which we can validate over in our dashboard. So we have a collection of blogs and we have a collection of authors. So let's take the full advantage of giving Cursor this Superbase MCP server so it can both build out the front end of something like a Next.js application as well as the back end with Superbase. But again, all running locally on my machine. So here's a Next.js app that I've just quickly vibe slopped out. So if we have a look at localhost over port 3000, we can see our dev blog, which is reading all of our blogs and all of our authors from that locally running Superbase instance. So let's again try to add comments to each one of our blogs. So this will require both backend and frontend changes. So in the backend, we're going to need a comments table with a foreign key relationship to the blog post that it belongs to. And on the front end, we're going to want to display those comments somewhere on this page. So let's see if Cursor is up to the job. So let's write a lengthy explanation that you don't need to sit through. So let's see how we go. So it's come up with a good plan. We're going to create a comments table with a foreign key relationship to blogs, add five example comments for each blog, update our Next.js app to display those comments, and then hopefully verify they're working. So let's run, and we'll just keep clicking run and let it do its thing. Ah, oh, and we're done. And so now if we have a look at our blog post, we now do in fact have comments. And in the Superbase dashboard, we have our comments table with our 600 comments that have been created for us. That's awesome. So let's pretend we've tested out this feature extensively. We're sure this works correctly and we want to push it to production. So back over in Cursor, we can run mpx Superbase db diff, which will compare the current state of our project with the last time we ran our migrations. So basically it will give us a list of every change we've made locally. We then want to put that in a file called add comments. And that's created a new migration file for us, which contains our create table statement for our comments table. So we can now take these migrations that we've created locally and push them up to our hosted production instance of Superbase. And to do that, we just run mpx Superbase db push, and it's listing out the migrations we're about to run on our hosted production version of our database. So let's say yes. And now if we head over to the production version of our project, we can see we now have this comments table, which we were able to create in our safe sandboxed environment running locally using the new remote MCP server.